Hello and welcome to another one of our live training Tuesdays. Uh, I'm Dan and I'm going to be taking you through a bit of a recap today on control of multi-element and also multi-function fixtures. Um, so first of all we're going to get straight into it. Um, I have here on my screen the Chauvet Demo 2024 show loaded in MagicQ which is uh, available comes with the MagicQ software. If you go to load show go to the demos folder you'll find this show here if you do want to go back and use it again. Um, and in this show, the reason why I've got this show loaded is at the back of the room here in my visualizer. I have these Nexus panels here, and these panels are multi element panels. They are 5x5 five five panels um, arranged in a 5x5 five five array. If I go and select my group of my Nexus panels here in my group window and press locate, you'll see my panels all come on together and you can see all of the individual elements in these panels. So there is a total of 25 elements in each panel. So if I just select the group, press locate, they're all gonna come on together. What we want to be able to do is control these individually. So I'm just gonna clear my programmer, zoom back out there. We've got a couple of different ways of controlling multi-element fixtures in MagicQ. So first of all, we can do that via the keypad. So I could select my uh, Nexus group again, and then on the keypad, I could type a dot to say that I am selecting an element rather than a head. So a dot says I'm selecting an element. So I could say dot one at at to select with no intensity, press locate. And there you can see there is element one for all of my panels because I selected the group with all of my panels and then I've just selected element one on every panel. Now we can also use through and we can use plus and minus as well. So I could say, for example, again, select my panels and I could go dot one through five at at locate and there's elements one through to five on every panel i could go and select just one of those panels and then select elements um, i could also include the head numbers in with that selection as well so i don't have to go and select my panels first and then type my elements i could do it all in one stroke if i know my head numbers uh, if i just go to view heads here and scroll down, you can see my first Nexus panel here, for example, is head number 401. So I could do all in one, 401, dot one, at, at, locate, and you see, there you go, just element one of head number 401 has come on there. So I can do that all in one stroke, selecting the heads and selecting the elements all together. And again, as well as through, we can use plus and minus to add and take away elements from that selection as well, just like selecting heads, but we use a dot to say that we're selecting elements. And the other way to select multiple elements in MagicQ is if I go back to view groups, select my Nexus panel group again, a bit more of a visual way this one. Uh, with that selected, I can go to view elements at the top here in the group window. So I'm in the group window, I've selected my group, go to view elements, and I get this visual layout of my elements here. And I'll show you where that actually comes from in a bit. It comes from the head file. Um, I'll show you that in a bit when we look at the strike M here. Um, so we've got this visual uh, five by five grid here, so I can just select elements here, and I don't need to hold shift in this window, they're just gonna latch on automatically. And if I press locate, you can see, there we go, that is uh, the way I've selected those there. You can see that appearing in my visualizer. So that's a more, of, more visual way to select elements. Okay, so that is multi-element control. Um, what we're gonna look at now is going a little bit deeper into fixtures that have multiple functions like our Color Strike M here. So the Chauvet Color Strike M, this is essentially two lights in one as is quite common nowadays. We've got multiple functions here. We've got our color plates and we've got our strobe beam tubes in the middle there as well. And to make this easier to control, we separate out these into functions in MagicQ. So we've got independent functions for the plate and for that strobe beam to make those easily controllable separately of each other. And each of these also have multiple elements, elements as well. So you can still go and select those elements, um, but we've also made it easier with separating out the functions. So what I'm going to do is go and start a new show. And I'm going to go and patch. Uh, so I'm gonna go choose head, and I need to find the Chauvet Pro Color Strike M. I've got this here in the full 97 channel mode. So I'm going to select that mode. And I better connect it up via my Magic DMX here. I'm going to hit patch it. I've got one of these at universe one starting at channel one. Now, do I want to stick that in the visualizer? Yes, I do. There we go. So I've patched my strike cam. And you'll see now if I go to back to layout one, 
my group window here, I've just started a new show, but it's automatically given me three groups when I've patched that color strike M. So in these groups, we've got our main group, as you would expect when patching any fixtures, we've got a group just for that fixture. If I, well, first of all, turn down my Grandmaster so I don't blind myself, and then press locate, the whole of that fixture is going to come on together. And if I just tilt that towards the camera a little bit, it might be a little bit washed out on the camera, unfortunately, um, as it's quite a bright fixture. Um, so that's our main group there, as we'd expect normally. I'm going to clear that. We've also got these groups for plate and beam. So these are our function groups. We've got one, one group for our plate, one function there, and our beam function here. So if I select the plate function group, and let's just turn up the intensity, you can hopefully see on the camera that just our plate elements have come on. So just the plate function there has come on on the strike M. And similarly, if I select the beam function and just turn up intensity for that, I'll try not to turn it up too bright, you can see just those beam elements have come on on my strike M here. So we've easily got these um, automatically generated groups per function here. We've still got our element selection, so I can go to uh, select my group again and go to view elements, you've still got this element layout here. But you'll also see that if I go and select my plate group, for example, and go to view elements, it's selected all of those plate elements automatically for me. And same if I go to the beam group, and go to view elements, I've got all of those beam elements automatically selected there. So what I wanna show you quickly is, uh, first of all, a couple of little bits in the head file. Um, where does this element layout come from and where do the functions come from? How does, it, how does Magic Q make these groups for us? That all comes from the head file of the fixture. I'm just gonna, not gonna take a deep dive into that, just gonna really briefly show you where these bits come from. So if I go back to patch, I select that fixture, hold shift, go edit current head. If I go to view channels, first of all, you'll see over on the right here, we have a function column. So some things are set to no function, like for example, tilt, that is an overall um, function of the fixture that that's, we always want to be able to control. That's a, a master function, if you like, so we don't set a function for that. Um, but we've set anything which is related to the plates, like for example, the uh, red, green, blue channels. These are all set to function one. So they've all got their individual elements, this element one, element two, element three, and so on, and then they all fall under function one here. And you can see if I scroll down, we've got our beam dimmers here. And again, they've all got their own elements, but they're also set under function two. So this is splitting those out into those functions. And where the functions are set up themselves is if I go to view other, go to functions, you can see we've set our functions up here. So I've named function one plate, we've named uh, function two beam. So that's what's going to appear in those, in those groups as the names. And we've also set a type for these functions as well. So these types are to help with morphing when you're going between these fixtures that have multiple functions. We've got a couple of options here. So we've got RGB main, strobe, and RGB candy. The candy option being for more if you've got like a ring on a wash fixture, for example. So what that will do is if I'm morphing from, say, for example, the Color Strike M to the JDC1, it will match up these functions, the main to the and the strobe. It will match those up between the fixtures uh, to make the morphing happen as nicely as possible. Uh, we've got options for whether we want these to appear in the grid or not, which I'll we'll look at the grid in just a second. That was where we were selecting our elements. And we've got um, color mix type here, and then we can set up the emitters per function as well. So the element grid is under the elements tab here. And you'll see this looks very familiar because we were looking at this just a minute ago. So this is where this is set up in the head file. So we set up this grid in the head file, how our elements are laid out on our actual fixture. And then when we go back to select our fixture, go to view elements, we get that layout there. So this is how our elements are laid out on our fixture and we can easily select those there and that is set up in the head file of the fixture. Um, one last thing I wanted to show you, um, it's not quite related to control, um, it's a little sneak peek into our uh, 1980 software, which is as yet unreleased. Um, if I go and look at my Strike M in my visualizer here, we've made some improvements in this version. So there's my Strike M. Um, if I, I'm just going to disconnect the actual fixture and put my Grandmaster back up. 
If I select, say, my plate group, for example, and turn up the intensity there, select my beam, and turn up the intensity there, you can see from version 1980, we have introduced um, custom, element, custom element layouts in our visualizer in Magic Viz. Um, so we now have these elements laid out and sized as they are on the actual fixture. If I go and, for example, add effects to my plate, let's add a dimmer chase, including the elements. You can see that running nicely across those elements there. And again, I could go select my uh, beam function, add effects, intensity, uh, dimmer chase again, including the elements. You can see that running across the beam elements there. And you can see that's looking a lot nicer in Magic Biz now. So that's a little bit of a sneak peek into our 1980 software, an improvement we've made there with custom element layouts in our visualizer. Okay, so that is control of multi-element fixtures and multi-function fixtures in MagicQ. A little bit of a sneak peek into a new feature in 1980 coming soon. Um, thanks for watching again today for another Training Tuesday, and we'll see you again next week.